Andy Berflus was just talking about you and said how even you know, during the national anthem, you guys are usually hooking arms together. He mm -hmm. said you can feel your energy. What? When does that energy begin, or does it ever end? Yeah, I don't think it ever ends. I think it starts in the beginning of the week um, when we get our opponent, and it, it goes on from there. And then um, it feeds off my my teammates making plays, and um, also off me making plays, and just the the will to want to win. That's where it comes from. So I want to win so bad. Played very good defense against some pretty strong teams. What would you say are some of the things that have made this possible over the last three, four weeks? Just the um, the focus. Um, the attention to detail, the technique, uh, wanting to work on a lot of things um, personal-wise and you know, trying to get better every single day. And I know what I'm capable of, and I just wanted to you know, show that for my teammates. I know I, I owe it to them and um, owe it to myself, too, to, um, to you know, bring out a lot of uh, things out on film of what I could do best, and that's what I did the, the last couple of weeks, I would say. Were you a Steelers fan as a kid? No. Who do you were? Patriots. Patriots. Uh, yeah. It occurs to me that Joe Flacco is somebody that was playing quarterback when you were grade school, high school, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I was watching him play against uh, Troy Palomalo, yeah. Joey Porter Sr. Yeah. Uh, you know, those great defenses with um, Ryan Clark and um, watching those great battles. So I did get to see Troy Palomalo pick him off a couple times and things like that. And um, got to see the those two clash together, especially Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. So I definitely watch those games. Have you seen Have you seen any Flacco film yet this week? And I, I watched I watched their game from yesterday against Jacksonville. Um, I watched them play, um, seen what they did, and um, that's the first time I I watched them since he he played with the with the Ravens. I kind of watched them a little bit with the Jets, but um, that's been a while since I watched them. What stands out to you about his fearlessness and going deep? Yeah, yeah, I, I seen that. Um, he he definitely likes showing off his arm, um, stepping into it and try to deliver a deep ball. And obviously, they got receivers who could go deep, and um, he gives them shots to you know get that that opportunity. So um, he definitely likes throwing the deep ball. So did uh, did Flus let you know he had twenty one tackles in a game once in college? I think he he did earlier this year during camp. He he kind of slipped that in there. And it said that on a on a on a quiet tip, but I, I that's not my first time hearing that. Is that is that your next goal now? After seventeen, I, Flu said it was eighteen at his count. Yeah, eighteen. So um, that is my next goal to beat Flus for sure. So, <laughs> as a young guy, why has it been so important for you to establish yourself as a leader with this group and somebody that ha has that kind of presence with this team? It's important just because um, you know we came in. And you know they 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 wanted us to turn it around, and um, I'm one of those guys that they brought in you know very early to do that. Me and Kyler, um, to start it off with the new coaching staff. So you know just coming in, just focusing on changing um, this thing around, um, changing the secondary, you know, changing the whole team. You know, it's always been important to me, and especially the lead and um, get my foot in the door was very important and show who I am as a player, who I am as a leader, and who I am on and off the field um, was always important to me. And um, to get this, you know, the Chicago thing into a winning um, direction. So, so, what does it mean to you to get consecutive wins, and this team is starting to to get on this kind of uh, roll here? It means a lot. It means a lot, especially to win. You know, I love winning, especially for the team. Um, I'm a team player first, so um, just to see the team happy, you know, it, it you know, it, 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 my day is. You don't understand. Like, um, I love, you know, seeing everybody happy in the building, from the staff members to the players to whoever it may be. Um, I love seeing everybody happy. So, um, it, as long as we keep winning, um, especially two in a row, div divisional wins, like you said, very important. So, um, we're in the right step. I know you've talked about in the past wanting to, like, sustain personnel so you guys can all grow together and be with one team for a long time. That said, when you look at, you know, um, other guys like Jalen Johnson and, you know, wanting to get in contract. How much are you rooting for him mm -hmm. to stay here and continue to build that and even yourself wanting to stay here long term? Yeah, I'm definitely rooting for Jalen um, always, um, especially him making, you know, a lot of big plays for us um, these last couple games and the the way he's been playing, his technique and um, even in a run game or even screens, 
Um, he's been very physical on the perimeter and showing that he could do it in a run or pass game. And um, I'm always going to be rooting for players like that, especially um, players who give in Chicago all that, that they got. So, um, you know, guys like him, guys like Bo and, you know, other guys like that, um, I'm definitely rooting for. And they're definitely great players. And um, they, they show it day in and day out. And um, they, they've been pouring it all. Um, even while I came in here, they, they showed me what the Bear culture could be and should be. And um, I'm just, you know, raising it up a, a higher level. And, um, with those guys, so. Do you feel like you, you guys are establishing a long-term core? Do you think yeah. your core is here? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, it's a great secondary. Um, we're very close. We're very tight. You know, I know where the, the, those guys are, even without even contacting them. That's how close we are. And um, you know, we have a lot of great times together. And um, you know, I love those guys for sure, no doubt. So I think we are establishing some very special <clears throat> here, and um, you can see it out there. You know, in the run game, in the pass game, and the energy. The energy is contagious. So um, I don't see how, you know, I mean, you could go in a different direction. Like Eddie said to me um, last week or two weeks ago, you never see you know, a secondary like this on one team or safeties like this on one team. Usually you get, you know, a great safety on the right side, a average safety on the left, or however it may be. But what he said to me, that stuck to me, and um, it's going to sit with me for a while. I don't, I don't know if you're technically playing better now than you were earlier in the season, but by the eye test, your contribution is much more noticeable uh, since Sweat got here. Uh, is that a coincidence, or is that, or has his impact just helped guys like you, even though you're different, totally different position, you know, just make more plays? I would say um, just his, his impact, but um, also me just, like I said, owning it to the team and owning it to myself. You know, I know what type of player I could be, and um, just, you know, a couple weeks Maybe before the Vikings game or during the Vikings game, I just told myself I want to be able to take over a game and show that I can. And um, yesterday wasn't my perfect game. You know, I, I still had a um, a drop interception. Um, I probably could have had another interception later in the game to end it off. And um, I feel like I, when I beat the running back, I probably could have been quicker to get that strip sack. But Jalen ended up getting an interception anyway, so. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm just getting there, but I'm not where I want to be because I know I could take over a game how I want I want to take over, and that's not a complete game for me. So that's not it. That's not that's not it. Was it a little frustrating for you earlier in the season because you weren't maybe taking as big a step as you wanted? Or uh, frustrating just because um, we didn't have an identity as a defense and um, the, just the, the certain scheme that we went from last year to this year. We were just trying to still find ourselves. Obviously, we went from um, two different DCs, but um, so it was kind of you know frustrating how I was playing and how my body was reacting and things like that. But now I'm getting back into the swing of things. I'm feeling like more of myself, and then um, I'm definitely picking out the right time. So, Jacoan, how have you how have you guys found that identity defensively? Like, what have been the keys to finally finding out who you guys want to be defensively? Just just using your your players, your stars, and um, everybody just. Um, want everybody to eat, if that makes sense. The chemistry's um, getting better, and guys want to see, you know, guys to see. So um, there's no selfishness on the defense, and you could tell. So um, just, you know, from the front to the back end, you know, guys want – everybody wants to, you know, make plays and things like that. But now Coach Flew, you know, he's trying to figure out, you know, to mix it up for us, you know. I got to get him this, you know, just different plays to get the defense um, you stopping the offense. And whatever that, that case is, whatever player that may be or – Whoever it may be, um, guys are just going to continue to, you know, be be great and, you know, continue to keep going. So I think that's that's big. So when you talk about the uh, being the guy that brings energy to your teammates and to the fans, have you been like that for your whole career? Back yeah. In college and high school. Yeah, high school. Yeah, for sure. High school, major league, um, co junior college, um, to Penn State. You know, I've always been that energy guy, but. It really just come from me hitting somebody or my, my teammates making plays. Like I said, when my teammates make plays, that gets me hyped up too. Um, when I see them succeed, you know, that makes me, you know, very happy um, when they do that. And, you know, especially when you have a coach that, you know, you, you'll kill for or die for, you know, players would, you know, do anything for a coach like that. And, you know, Coach Flus is one of those guys. And you could tell just by the way the locker room is, you know, reacting. Um, these last couple of weeks, and um, it hasn't always been great, but guys have, you know, been wanting to come in and work and wanting to grind and wanting to turn this thing around. So, like I've been saying these last couple couple of weeks, the players that we brought in, the coaching staff and things like that, um, have done a great job these last couple, you know, weeks of keeping us together.
Jaquan, Matt Eberflus was in here earlier talking about the late hits that Justin takes and how he's sending him into the league. As a defender, I know you've been vocal on support. What's your reaction when he keeps getting hit and there's no there's no flag time over time? If, if it was us, they'll be throwing it. It wouldn't even be a reaction. They'll just throw it. So uh, I think they should just treat him fair. He is a quarterback. Um, you know, I know he's 230 and he's running a 4-3, so, but it doesn't really matter. He's still a quarterback. We have to protect him. And um, it's disappointing. Obviously, the, the other team being told to do dirty stuff after the play, hit him like this a certain way. It's obviously being told just by the way they've been treating him these last couple of weeks. A lot of shots to the head. And it's, it's very disappointing seeing a guy like that um, get hit and take hits like that. And one of those hits, you know, you know, God forbid, you know, could be something very bad. So um, the, I think the league need to get on that and notice that it, it's, it's bad. But a common thought in the locker room that it's sort of systematic, that as I think you just said, that they're coaching these guys to hit fields hard or late or at the echo. Yeah. Um, you just tell, like, just from the other teams, like, we don't, we like, you know, Coach Flusen, he doesn't tell us to do anything like that. But um, you could just tell, like, the, just the way, like, they, they just, you know, hit them after their play. They just try to, like, you just tell how they're just trying to tug and, you know, try to do whatever they can to get him out the game. And um, it's obvious. It's obvious. You know, all them head shots yesterday, all them late hits, um, trying to mess with, you know, his hands and things like that, it's obvious. So the um, league just has to, you know, protect um, the quarterback. And we're going to protect ours at all times. So. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. How do you feel like the vibe in the building has uh, changed after, like, over the last month? You guys are three and one. Um, I mean, it's been amazing. Um, I think we were talking yesterday after the game. Uh, this locker room. This is probably the best week I've seen this locker room in a long time. You could just, you could just tell that there was a, a confidence, um, and like a calm confidence. Um, the other cool part is there's a lot of cross cross the locker room talk. Um, I know y'all are in there a lot. See how it's kind of O and D split, but um, it's just fun when we're walking around. And you can see guys mingling, and this team's pretty close right now. Um, you know, kind of built built over the season and relationships built, but it's credit to the importance Flus has put on that since since the spring. Kind of all we put into that. I think we're seeing a lot of that come to fruition now. Lucas, on the fourth and thirteen play, specifically for you to allow that to execute, what is it that you need to do in that moment for to make that play happen? Understanding situational awareness. Um, you know, we're pretty sure with the weather, we were outside of Cairo's kick line. I don't know. I don't know exactly what that was that day, but also, let's talk about eight uh, having a banner year. That, that guy is, has done so much for this team. I look at all the close games we've been in and count a lot on Scalesy, Trent, and Cairo. They're doing great. But, uh, yeah, situational awareness and, and credit to the nuances of everyone doing their job. Justin handling it just like a normal protection adjustment if it was third and 12 and um, little nuances. And we've got signals we make up front, and he's got signals. And uh, Tev is doing a great job. Um, Nate Davis sold it, too. I mean, he had 97 over him, really good player. And um, at the line, he was doing some cool communication and saying some cool things, and that really sold it. And uh, it, it's really all 11 being on the same page because um, that doesn't happen if DJ doesn't react immediately. Um, I even think on the outside, Mooney stacked this guy too. So if you're if you're number one and you got two and 11 stacking corners, I mean, take whichever shot you want. And he was talking about the, the cadence, obviously of Justin Fields on that play. This might be a weird question, but was that one of his better cadence moments? Because they've been talking about that you know, since he got here and that part developing in his game. Um, I, I think Justin's done a great job handling it. Um, this is a intricate cadence, and, and I'd probably say we might have one of the tougher silent cadences uh, across the league. We do, we do a lot of stuff, and we put a lot on him with run checks, pass checks. And understanding how his his motion timing affects a snap cadence he wants to use, um, so he kind of pulled it all together in that moment. So credit to him. And um, even this week, you know, we were talking how I think 
came up to him, and, and I thought Cadence was going to be huge this week. Uh, back at home, you know, I think we, what, did three or four on the road in a, while, in a while. So teams had a while to study our Cadence. There's a lot of self-scout on our side, but there's opponent scout. Um, with TV copies and how big the league is now, there's microphones everywhere. Um, so it's a credit to him for honing in on a situation and not just taking information that was in the play, but information from a few weeks and executing. The play doesn't happen, though, unless you snap the ball. So can you kind of explain what you have to go through process-wise in terms of whether you're deciding to snap the ball or not? I mean, you obviously have to make sure they're offside. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely a, a, a fun play as a center, i got to be honest. Like, uh, when when the certain situation comes up and, and, and I, we get the play call, um, I actually get pretty excited for it because it's uh, – I don't know if you can see it. I was pretty elated on that. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you got to be locked in. You got to know. You got to know that they're clearly offsides because they can step across and go back. And then if I rip it, it would be a false start. There's just there's a lot of nuances to that. Um, a lot of practice that goes into it. Like, fortunately, on the, on the scout team this week, um, some were not planned, and then some gets. He'll just mix it up, and you know we could have a play that's you know a goal line play and snap it and. So it's it's something that we do train, but um, yeah, in that moment you got to be locked in, and it's weird. Like your peripherals get better because you're so like paying attention to it and kind of keeping, you know, one eye this way, one eye that way. Heart start pumping a lot more when you see the guy actually cross the line. No, I mean, uh, fortunately, I've had quite a few reps of free plays, um, both practice games, um, so it's not something new to me, and um, you know. Credit to everyone there. I mean, it was it was a well executed play, and um, it was it was good to get that one there and just really swing the momentum. As I'm sure you know that that was a Rogers specialty in Green Bay. How similar was that play with with Justin, with you and Justin, to what Rogers used to do all the time uh, with the Packers? I mean, they jumped off sides, we snapped the ball, and got a touchdown. So you you, you could look at the uh, the other plays that we've had doing that, but I, you can't execute it any better. That's what I'll say. Lucas, uh, uh, how gratifying is this kind of moment for you, for you know everything you've been through, injuries, losing, and your two years with the Bears, and now finally, you know, a little bit of a role here. How, how gratifying is it to get to this point now, where you're contributing and 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 on a on a, on a team that's like I said on a roll? I think I think I'm taking more gratification in the guys around me. Um, 76 couldn't be doing better than he is now. What he's, I guess, what everyone sees is tape, but. Y'all should see what he's doing in the locker room, what he's doing, communicating, what he's doing off the field. Um, I mean, it's it's the growth from him him has been impressive. And then, you know, getting to mix in with 70 and, and his leadership role is improving. And, you know, getting Nate back from the injury that he had and him finally settling in and really kind of settling down Darnell and letting Darnell be Darnell because Nate, Nate's a veteran and just doing amazing with that and getting, of course, to work with one such a dynamic player. Um, I mean, we saw that kind of backed up clip where he got us completely scot-free out of there. Um, of course, protected and watching two go play. Like, I, I don't take as much gratification, I guess, from my success or playing or it's about the team. It's about the C. It's about this city. Like, you know, it's – this place deserves, deserves, I think, what's coming to us. We've put the work in. There's a lot of good people here. A lot of good people, and um, they've been nothing but good to me and kind to me since I've got here. So, uh, on the other side of the ball, you got a guy in Jaquan who seems intent on emerging as a leader and being that Billy Bot for this team. This guy's been around the league. What kind of appreciation do you have for a young guy who seems to know what he wants in his future? Yeah, I'll give you a behind the curtain. I guess um, Cody Whitehair had an amazing block on a field goal. You know, things happen. He's like. That might be the toughest position in football nobody really talks about. He ends up blocking three guys. Cairo nails a kick. Brisker turns right around the team meeting room and compliments Cody. Like, that's – Brisker loves ball. He is ball. Like, everything about him, and he gets he gets the impact plays that, that ball players get. And when somebody does that and then they step out and have a game like he did and brings it every play, brings it in practice, you can't not respect him. Like, he's – I know he's a second-year player, and I know people can say what, but, like, 
he does not act like a second year player. He's he's earned the respect of us and he's he's tougher than nails. Like what he does week in, week out to get his body right to come in and be the impact player he is is super impressive. So he's got all my respect in the world. Uh, love having him on the field. Like he's he's a game changer. Lucas, do you guys as players and as a team talk about what could happen over the final four games if you keep playing as well as you did yesterday? Like, Do you, do you look, allow yourselves to look at that bigger picture or do you stay in I think the, <clears throat> the awesome part about the NFL is it, it doesn't allow you to do that. Um, I, you know, it's a really good defense we're about to go up against. Um, their offense just, you know, became pretty explosive with the quarterback addition they had. Um, got to go into a different environment and play and win a game. And so we're completely locked in right now on this week. Um, cause as soon as you start talking about week 16, 17, what that might look like, what divisional round and wild card is, is when you start, you know, metaphorically put the cart in front of the horse. Um, and that's when you really don't pull in the same direction. Um, so the locker rooms, the locker rooms really focused right now what we have ahead of us. Since, since, Justin's come, since Justin's come back from the injury, he's been playing at a really, really high level. What have you seen from him that's maybe different or just at another level in these last three games compared to before he went out? I mean, I see, I see the same guy every day. Um, ripping notes on his iPad. You know, these new guys, they write on I am, I'm pen and paper, but <laughs> ripping notes, um, saying the little things when needed, calling the offense up when both good or bad. Um, Hanging out with the guy, like he, he just he's attacked it the same. You know, y'all probably want to hear that he's probably been doing something different or changed or something. But um, no, I mean one's one's a special player, but he's even a, a better <coughs> person. I think people are starting to see how much this locker room has his back, how much we up front have his back. Like, you know, we don't like it when he gets those extra hits. We don't like it. we try to run up there and. Get there. We're just not as fast as he is. Not everybody runs a four three four four like he does. But no, he's 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 a great kid, great great player, great man. Um, but that's pretty much what I have for you on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.